Welcome to another episode of Five Things during the 31 days of Halloween, and it is our Halloween season finale that we're doing. So we've had a great run of episodes during this Halloween season. This is not going to be like the others. There's not going to be any arguing. I don't think. We may not have that many disagreements around today's topic, which is going to be about the five things that we want to see in Scream 7. And... Just so that you know, make sure that you do the likes and the subscribes and the comments and the follows and let us know what you think should happen in Scream 7. So share your thoughts and let's talk about my co-host of everything popcorn and that is Jen herself. Hey, so uh, you're back for the, the season finale. I don't know if you caught the last episode where uh, Danny was going off about the number of times Bitch was dropped in Nightmare on Elm Street. He feels that he won that battle. So we may have to come back to that in a future episode. He didn't win that battle. <laughs> 11 times. 11 oh. times in how many movies? No. Yeah, I don't think it's a lot compared to some other movies where you may get that one one mm-hmm. film, like Child's Play. Right? Exactly. Exactly. Thank mm-hmm. you. Now stick around towards the end of the video after we wrap up our list so you can see the information about the In Search of Darkness documentary that you have a chance to be involved in. Time's ticking out. So if you're watching this after Halloween, the campaign is over. But if you're watching it beforehand, have your name in the credits of the fourth film in that documentary, which is going to be about the 90s. And that's really where Scream was born. So we're going to run through our credits, and then we'll be right back. I am inevitable. Now, we do have a returning guest to talk Scream, and that is Craven. Thank you for the invitation. It's great to be back in the nerd box talking scream. It's it's you know what man, it's I love it and I appreciate it. And what a way to end the the the, the, the end of uh, Halloween here. The end of the month. Right? Yeah. What a way to end it. Yeah. Oh yeah, going out talking about scream 7 stuff and what we want to see and having you come back to talk about it as well. Oh, it's well, it's awesome. I can't wait. Oh yeah. Now, before we do dive into things, Raven, I don't think we got your opinion on it. So what was your thoughts on the whole Scream 6? Did you love it? Did you hate it? You're indifferent? (laughs) Well, I will tell you this. I I enjoyed it more than I enjoyed 5. I will tell you that. And after 5, I was pretty, pretty vocal about not being a big fan of the character of Sam and some of the performance there that went on. And I'm really happy to say that in six, and I went open-minded. I said I'm going to give I want to give this character another chance. And Sam, the character, won me over in six. I thought she showed tremendous uh, arc for her character, and I felt that one thing that James and Guy did, the writers did a good job of, was they I think they heard us, the fandom, and they put made sure they had character development in this movie that we didn't get in five because it was so fast we barely knew anybody and now i felt for me anyway uh i felt they did a great job in that department and melissa did a great job as as sam so those were some things that i enjoyed and there were like a lot of firsts in six Uh as you know and so i don't know i don't know if we're talking spoilers so i don't want to ruin anything but there there were some firsts that and some of the things I was really hoping to see for a while 
and they were in uh -huh. there. So anyway, it, yep. it was definitely a darker tone. And I have to give a shout out to Max Ferrier, who was Ghostface in the Aged Mask. Uh -huh. And he killed it, man. Yeah, he absolutely oh, yeah. nailed it in that role. And he was so tactical, so confident. He was in charge as Ghostface. And I, I felt that, man. And I enjoyed that tone. So, uh, yep. so I thought six was for me uh, a better movie for me. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it more. I should say that uh, than, mm -hmm. than I did five. Still love, you know, still like five. Don't get me wrong, right? But, but I just thought it, it, it was a new, a new, some new directions were taken. Yep. So, and now we've got, you know, not to get ahead, but we're getting into seven and Christopher Landon. I am, ex I am ecstatic about that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. me too. So I. Uh, yeah. When we found out the news, we went and did a, a news special on it, and I didn't tell Jen who the replacement was. It just oh. said, hey, Radio Silence is out. Yes. And as we're going through it, she reads it, and it's like, oh, he did what? Oh, I like him. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it was so cool. Um, and I, I'm, I'm still very excited about it. And, you know, one thing I'll say about a big difference between Radio Silence and Chris is that, you know, Radio Silence were kind of like tacticians, they made it real clear that they had nothing to do with the writing. They did not, they weren't in the writing room. They were separate from all of that. So basically Radio Silence are given a script and they go make the movie. Uh -huh. And the big difference we got to think about for Seven is that Christopher, he is a writer and a director. Uh -huh. And so we're going to get to see, I believe, uh, his, uh, well, and we'll talk about it later, but I think, I think we're going to see a difference. And, yeah. and how the movie plays out with that so additional too. input. So I'm excited mm -hmm. about Christopher big time. Craven, tell us what's going on on your channel and where people can find you. Sure. Well, real simple. You can find me at Craven. It's C-R-A-V-E-N, Wes Craven, all the way. Craven, something scary. That's how you can find me on YouTube. Uh, and man, there's always something going on on the channel. Uh, you know, here we are going into November. And I'm very excited to say that on November the 6th uh, at uh, 8 p.m. Central, I'll be having Michael Kennedy join my channel, who is the co-writer of Freaky. And we're going to be discussing his brand new film that drops in theaters on the 10th called It's a Wonderful Knife. Oh. And it's a Christmas slasher. And let me just tell you, you guys, if you haven't seen the trailer by now, you need to go see it and you need to be in this we theater on, on the 10th. It's going to be amazing. So we're going to be talking about that on the 6th uh, coming up. Very excited about that. And there's always watch parties and streams. And so just come over and hang out. And if you like Scream, you'll, you'll be right at home. Yeah, it's definitely Return of the Slashers. It is. And I love it. And Scream has definitely helped that. Halloween <laughs> has helped that. And you know we're, we're the beneficiaries of it as fans we're just getting to see a oh, lot yeah. of great slashers and mm -hmm. i just love it totally killer you know i just i just love the resurgence that we're in it's great oh yeah yeah, yeah. totally killer the jester yeah. uh, conference from sweden all good stuff yes that's right great time to be a slasher particularly fan yes definitely Mm -hmm. All right. Now, before we jump into things, and if you're tuning in for the first time, we run from five to one with our list. So, Craven, what do you got? But my number five is I am ready to see Christopher Landon's fingerprints on the script and the story for Scream 7. I, and the reason I say that is because ultimately, I believe that when it's all said and done and we're all watching that movie for the first time, I, I'm anticipating that we're going to see a strongly written whodunit murder mystery slasher film with the mystery really, really back. Uh, kind of like the old Craven days. And, you know, I will tell you guys this, that one thing that was an exciting takeaway for me when I interviewed Christopher last month on the channel, I asked him a question. I said, how important is it to you to have input into the script and the story in the movies that you direct. And his and his response, he started with this. He said, it's critical for me 
that I have input and that I have, uh, you know, into the script and the story. He said, even if I don't get a writing credit, the, I, 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 I'm going to be involved with that script. And I, I guess I got to tell you something inside. I was like doing cartwheels and trying not to show my excitement. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you know, got to stay cool. And I was, you know, but inside I was, I was just jumping for joy because, I, you know, I really believe that, that if we had had someone like a Christopher Landon on six, let's say, I think we're all aware of some of the plot problems that are the rise, some, some writing issues that are in six still love the movie, but there are some issues. I think that having someone like Christopher, when he gets, the, if, if James and Guy are officially announced, which they haven't been yet, but we're just under that assumption. If that comes true and he gets that script from them, I think he's going to be the one that's going to say, oh, wait a second. Hang on. This doesn't, there's continuity issue here. Let's fix that. Let's fix this thing. And, fix, and I think that will make the whole story tighter. And when we go and watch it, some of those little holes, you know, here and there will be cleaned up. And I, I'm just, I just can't wait. And with the way he writes, I think just his input alone is going to make a huge difference on the script. Yeah, that is a great number five to kick off with. I am really excited to see what he comes up with. Again, I was a little disappointed with Radio Silence going out because they were doing an okay job with it. Probably mm -hmm. better than what most people would have done with it. But then when you add Christopher Blighted on, it's like, oh, yes, upgrade. <laughs> yes, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Yeah, he's so much more experienced, not only as a director, but as a writer. And that's, I think yeah. we can't minimize how huge that is, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and what he brings to the table. And oh, you know yeah. what? And I, I, guys, I got to tell you, and you guys know this, I'm sure. He's really good friends with Kevin Williamson. And he even went so far as to say, I think Kevin is the one who threw my name in the hat to help mm -hmm. him get the gig. So, you know, good buddies talk, man. Let's go grab a bite to eat. Mm -hmm. And I'm just saying, <laughs> I'm just saying, we may get some Kevin Williamson thrown in here in this story as well. So it's exciting. It's really that exciting. Would be great. So my number five is for Gail's story to end. And if that means she dies, then she dies. I just feel like they've... I mean, come on. Like, they want you to believe that this little tiny girl practically gutted Dewey after all he'd been through, and Miguel just continues to live. I'm over it. Got a weak pulse. Get the backboard. We need to move. The story arc for Gail is over. It's time to send her off into the sunset. And um, my whole entire list could have been just made up of let's tie up the loop ends. Let's stop teasing certain things. Yeah. Let's finish character mm -hmm. stories and go yes. that way. Yeah, I mean, it's because I keep, whenever Six came out, I'm like, okay, this is going to be the movie that Gail is back in form from Scream 2 and 3 uh -huh. and and 1 and 4 even. Like, this is going to yeah. be the old Gail, right? You see, she's feisty, fiery. She's in the mix. Guys, I was like, come on, man. We, you can do better. You yeah. can do better here, writers, with her character. Yeah. Uh, and I'm, I'm at the point where don't bring anyone back for a Tobin cameo. I just don't. Yep. I really, I mean, I, I, I love seeing her, but at the same time, you're right. I think unless they make her story arc rise up from the ashes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just don't, yeah. don't even, let's don't do what we did in five and six again with her. All right, so my number five, I'm going big. It may be number ones, number twos on people's list, Ooh. but I'm I'm kind of getting frustrated with where it's at, and I want to see the conclusion to Stu Mocker. No little subtle hints that he may still be alive while we're saying he's dead and all these other little things. We need a conclusion. Bring him back or just make it official he is dead. I don't want to touch on it again unless he's coming back. Here's the thing, too. And, and I, I stand, I will die on this hill, right? There's not many hills you die on, you pick and choose. But here's one I will. In five and six, if, if as a fan, as a viewer, if we really pay attention, there are what I call breadcrumbs and there are clues in those movies, both of them, yep. that you can draw lines to Stu Mocker's involvement. And 
so mm-hmm. so I'm with you, man. Like, you need to pay off. You you sh- if you're if you're, you're you you need to deliver, and and don't let us go through another film of clues and no payoff. That would be so yep. disappointing. My number four is that the stakes need to be raised in this movie. We had way too many survivors, guys, in Scream 6. We, none of the core four. I was just sure we would lose at least one of them, right? And I'm gonna, I'll, listen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When we don't, and I love Chad. I really, Chad is a character I like. So it's not, I'm not coming from a place that I don't like the character. But let me just tell you, 17 stab wounds to the upper torso on both sides. And he lived. I'm like, are you serious? I mean, it. you know what? I felt bad. It's just like, they killed Chad. And and you know how iconic mm-hmm. that scene would be right now if it was a death oh, scene? Yeah. It would be right up there with Becker oh, and yeah. Tatum yeah. And, and a lot of others. Right? Yeah. But that's actually cheapened now. Yeah. Because he lived, so it's kind of like it was a cool attack. Mm-hmm. But and then Mindy getting the the subway in the stomach. All is she, and then she's running around doing jumping jacks in the, in the theater, uh, with the bandages on. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, what what is happening right now? Um, and my point is this: every and Gail, Gail, I, I thought for just a split second, yeah, she was dead in that apartment. Mm-hmm. Just a second. And what do we hear them say? <laughs> We got a weak pulse. I'm like, oh my gosh. So, yeah. And what's interesting? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um. So anyway, I. And here's the thing. I'll say last thing. And this is a soapbox for me. It's not a nerd box. It's a soapbox, but it's in the nerd box. So in Scream Five, everyone in the production says we had to kill Dewey uh-huh. to get Sydney back and raise yep. the stakes. Number one, they didn't have to kill Dewey. He uh-huh. could have been attacked and been in ICU, and we didn't know if he would live or die. And uh-huh. you know, Sydney would come talk to see him, knowing he might die. And she would have come. Yeah. That's yeah, sorry, guys. This is number one. Um, and number two, they did mm-hmm. kill him, and because they wanted to raise the stakes. That was right. That's the other reason. And what do they do in six? They take all those stakes they raised and threw them on the ground. They're all gone. They undid everything. Yep. And so now everyone's happy and gets a fairy tale ending. I'm like, is this a horror movie? This is a slasher <laughs> film. People yeah. die in slasher movies. Yeah. So honestly, guys, I believe Christopher yeah. Landon won't be going. I think he's going to hit us hard. And one thing he said when I talked to him, he says, there will be blood. There will be blood. And so I'm telling you, I, yeah, I, I honestly, I'm okay to see two core four members. Is the opening kill right at the beginning just set the tone that everybody's in danger so just a thought so raise the stakes that's my number four <laughs> yep i agree yeah i can't argue that the stakes definitely need to be raised mm-hmm. if we do not raise them then we're seeing the scream franchise take a turn for the worst like a lot of the other franchises did and there's a lot of story that could be told here Number four is pretty much on the same level. I just want to see something happen with the core four. I think someone has to has to die. <laughs> they, yeah. they kept a little, I mean, I understand that there were killings in six, but you know, what did they do? They killed off Jason and his roommate in the beginning and, and the teach, you know, the professor that meant nothing to the story, except yeah. that she was Samara weaving, mm-hmm. um, right. you know, and they killed, they killed Mindy's girlfriend who was in it for like, you know, a half an hour. It just, they didn't they didn't do what they normally do i feel like they were too scared or something i don't know but something has to happen with the poor boy. yeah and even the boyfriend survived i know right danny right. survived i mean i uh-huh. they, they that was the red herring they wanted us to you know that was their red herring for the movie and yeah but mm-hmm. but jen your point is you're absolutely on point because everyone that died we didn't care about them we had no emotional connection to them mm-hmm. And at least with the core four, we have some connection to these characters mm-hmm. where it hurts if they die. That's what you want. You want to have, you want to be angry at that killer. How dare you kill this person? 
My number four is a, another flavor of our number fours here. Uh, so the story that I'm looking for is, is different. I don't want to see all the Easter eggs. I don't want to see us follow a similar story that is in part three. Let's finally break the mold. Not just the city we're in. Let's break the mold and go somewhere new with it. I think we touched on why yeah. in all of our fours. So let's yeah. roll on to number <laughs> yeah. three. My number three ties in nicely to your number four part of it because I want another new location setting. My number three is the same. I really did enjoy seeing new surroundings in New York. Mm -hmm. I thought that was cool. I don't like I don't mind Woodsboro or anything like that. Don't get me wrong, but I enjoyed the new setting because you just never know what you're going to see next, you know, mm -hmm. and so I really do hope we see something new again. And and I also agree about don't follow three. If we're in Hollywood uh. making a true crime series based on the events that happen in New York or whatever, I'm like, okay, who's who's going to be the sibling? Where's the half sibling? Because it was yeah. going to be one of these Roman characters. And I just, you know, I have a pet peeve about trying to you're basically taking Wes Craven and Kevin Williamson's ideas and you're you're updating them but I mean that the killer in six was was Debbie Salt 2.0 it yeah. was the exact same situation mm -hmm. but it but a male instead of a you know father instead of the mother uh -huh. I think you guys can we let, yeah. let's do something original so uh -huh. new setting original yeah. let's don't mimic three like you said, you know, I, I'm with you on that. So that's, that's mine. I'm hoping that we do see something involving Seattle and we're going up north. That'd be nice. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, it Definitely. Would. Yes. So could you guys just imagine the opening scene starts with a shot of the sky, this beautiful sky coming down, panning down to this, to this, the space needle. And we know we're in Seattle. Oh, and we know somebody lives in Seattle. It's very similar to what you both talked about already. It's splitting up the core four. And this is gonna kind of lean into my part two. So whether they turn on each other, whether they go their separate ways, whether people are getting killed, I need to see that core four shaken up and Killing them off is one of the easier ways to do it, but also turning one of them into possibly ghost face is something that none of us would see coming. And there's motive. And there's been plenty of story that's been laid out for several of these characters to be it. And yeah. let us not overlook that when we, before Quinn revealed herself, they thought it was Mindy. If it's you two, that just leaves. Mindy. What does that say about their unity? And they also they also suspected Sam right in the beginning. It makes perfect equal sense. That actually does make a lot of sense. Yeah. Oh, they're not as rock solid as they like to think they are. Hundred percent. And I thought it was an interesting mm -hmm. script choice when they had Sam say it's, it's Mindy. Like she was like going through like who it could be, and she is. Yeah, she calls out Mindy, <laughs> thinking that she's Ghost yeah. Face. I'm like, wow, that's revealing. Yeah. And of course, after that, they're all happy and friends again. Yeah. But she thought that, mm -hmm. and that's uh -huh. that is something that we should not yeah. look over or overlook. I should say that's a good point. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. Okay, number two for me is the return of Sydney Prescott. That's my number two. <laughs> oh, hey, I love it. That's awesome. That's so good. And and not only return, I want her to be featured. I want her to be as much of the lead as Sam is in this story. And one of the ideas that I have in my head that I've laid out is if you're going to have the core four back, and that looks like what's going to happen, uh, you bring back Sydney, and you know how you sometimes these crime shows where <clears throat> you see on TV, they'll have two stories running concurrently, 
and they'll bounce back right between each story and it flows nicely that's what if, if they're going to do that i want to see that type of setup where it is 50 50 not 70 30 sam mm-hmm. to sydney i i want to see sydney's story and sam's story running and then they merge for the third act that's that's kind of what i'm thinking and if we do have let's say sam in the core four in new york or some other location wherever and we've got sydney in seattle because that's where she's supposed to be living in the scream universe you could have these attacks happen on the same night you could open up with an attack with the core four and then we think that it's going to be the title card Mm -hmm. and after it but it's not a title card it pans over to another scene and we're like where what's happening it's sydney prescott house and now we see Ghostface attacking Sydney in the same night at the same time. And I'm telling you, I'm getting excited because this is a way you could lay the groundwork, an example of having dual leads. And so when I say Sydney's back, I mean back. She's yeah. our girl again. Our final girl's back. That's what I'm hoping for. Number two. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. That's a great number two. You'll be excited for my number two when we talk about it. But uh, yeah, I I agree. We need Sydney back. I think, and Jen and I talked about this right after we saw five. It's like, you can give her a a film off. Establish your core four so that you can bring them all back to a final showdown in the the next movie. So that's fine. But everybody wants Sydney back. There's just that little minority out there that complains, nah, we don't need her. No, we do. She needs to finish her story, and it can't yes. be, hey, let's kill her off in the opening minutes. Oh, no. No, 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 no. 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 She no. needs to. We I need will to... I will be really mad. <laughs> <if they do. laughs> yeah. I want Sid back. I want her there. She needs to be present the entire movie. Yes. That's it. She, we have a break without her, and while I liked the movie, I missed Sid. We'll take what you guys have and we're going to build off of it. Scream is the only horror franchise that will be able to pull this off. And that is by splitting the story. So Craven, like you're saying two stories in one. Yeah. I'm talking splitting the stories in individual movies. I want to see Kirby investigating the cult in her own film. I can watch the core four in her own film and then I can see sydney have her own film as well i think if if we really can let's make make a paramount scream tv series following kirby i think the story can split out because we have such well established characters that people like that they will follow them to these other movies you can't do that with halloween you can't do it friday 13th you tried it with saw but you screwed up because you killed characters off too soon here we have a great bunch of characters that we will follow to other films That's interesting. The Kirby TV series. You know what else is cool about that idea? Is that you could have previous actors from other Scream movies come back, not as their Scream characters, because this is a different universe. Uh-huh. You, they could just come and play new characters. Emily Mortimer, who I've been wanting, Angelina, who I think Roman's accomplice, by the way. Uh-huh. I've been clamoring, clamoring for her to come back. But you could have all these actors that would want to come back you know, if you wanted to do it that way, they could appear in the series as different mm-hmm. characters and uh, have a nice tie and like an anthology kind of feel to it, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But either way, I love the idea. Yeah. 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 There's a lot to be told there. And like even you mentioned Angelina, right? In all the promotional materials after Scream 2 came out, she is listed as a lie. Well, guys, I have to say it is clearly my number one uh, above all else i want to see the return of Stu mocker that's my number I've one said... <laughs> hey jen you and i got it we got a thing going here girl we are locked in the we scene. Do. <laughs> i love it uh i have to say um and i and i can't wait to hear jen's thoughts too but I just want to say, as far as Stu goes, there are so many clues that have been laid out in five and six from script dialogue to off-screen things. Uh, they're, they're, they're all over the place, and they're all pointing the needle towards Stu Mocker. And I'm like, okay, it's time 
it is time. Even to the point, the point in six that they made it clearly known. Well, they did in five with the little blurb. Remember on the YouTube channel yep. is the real right. But they reinforced that in yeah. six. And we've actually got the characters acknowledging they're not sure Stu died in the Stab universe. So I said all that to say Stu Mocker needs to be back on the self-professed conductor of the Stu train. And we are rolling down the tracks. We're good. And seven needs to be the time for the final showdown of Stu Mocker with Sidney Prescott. And he will be killed in such a fashion. There will be no debate. We'll have that beheading that Mindy keeps talking about. We're going to have something dramatic <laughs> that we're all going to say, okay, yeah. he's dead, guys. It's over. Yeah. But we came back for one big showdown. And I have all kinds of ideas. I won't do it here of, of how <laughs> Stu could be. Yeah, Stu could be implemented into the story where it makes sense. All mm -hmm. that good stuff. So, guys, we need Stu Mocker. It's time. It is time to pay off yes. on the teasing. We have waited long enough for Stu, especially for those of us who know he's still alive. <laughs> you can be in denial all you want to, but the clues are there. <laughs> they point directly to Stu being alive. But the fact that Matthew Lillard said himself, I didn't die, do we refer to him in the first like as being alive? He said he is a real Looney Tunes. Who's Stu Mucker? Oh my god. He's Billy Loomis's accomplice, a real Looney Tune. What I would like to see is we don't know. We we don't know the entire film. We're all getting frustrated because the clues are there and there's people saying that he's dead. We get the reveal in the final minutes setting up part eight. And that's where we get the showdown. Uh oh, nice. Yep. Oh, wow. I love that. That's that's a cool cliffhanger. I do too. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Ooh. My number one was your number twos, and that's bringing that camel back. <laughs> that is the highest priority on the list for me is to see her back have this story finished it's even bigger than having the stew story finished out is that just need to see her come back get that same okay. sense when she appears on screen it's like oh everything's gonna be okay because yeah sydney's here <laughs> you know yeah. that's what i want that's my number one heck yeah yes i mean it would be an amazing film if we get Stu and sydney back and Sydney in a prominent role, as we talked about earlier. Uh, I can only imagine our discussion, guys, when we get back together to do our <laughs> post Scream 7 thoughts. Oh, yep. wow. That would yeah. be a fun one, man. I'm going to tell you what, we're that would be something to look forward to. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Definitely. All right. So, do you agree with our list? What do you want to see in Scream 7? Let us know by dropping it in the comments. You, are you on this new train or not? I know people are divided about it, but let us know. Do you think he's coming back? Do you think he's alive? Do you think the studio just may say, ah, we're just going to kind of leave it alone and tease you some more? <laughs> oh, what if, yeah. <laughs> Don't make the mistake, Spyglass. Don't do it. <laughs> yeah. No. All right. And so before we wrap up some things, Craven, just let us know where we can find you one more time. Sure, no worries. Uh, yeah, you'll find me over at at Craven something scary altogether, C R A V E N, and that's it. That's my YouTube channel. You'll find me there. Uh, my Instagram is the same at uh, Craven something scary dot com or not dot com, just at Craven something scary. And you can find me on Twitter at Craven Movies. So I'd love for you guys to come visit me on social media, follow, and you stay in the loop on what's going on. But most importantly, come subscribe to the channel, hang out. Lots of videos, lots of interviews, just all kinds of, th of, of stuff there. So would love to have you. And I appreciate you guys for the invitation. This has been a blast. Yeah, thank you for joining us. Now, before we do wrap up, remember, Scream dropped in 1996. In Search of Darkness, part four of the trilogy starts in the early 90s. And you can be a part of that. And here is the video to discuss it. These are the times that try men's souls. Police believe that O.J. Simpson is in that car. Any requests? Oh, hi there, Franklin. There's one near you. Can you explain what internet is? The In the Search of Darkness 80s trilogy is complete. But as we all know, horror never dies. 
The early 90s represented an exciting, challenging, and evolutionary period for horror filmmaking. Showtime! Are you ready? In Search of Darkness 1990 to 1994, we'll dive into this era and analysis, deconstruct, recontextualize, and reframe this decade in horror. Through Nerdbox, through the end of 31 Days of Halloween, you will get 10% off of three packages by clicking on the link that is in the description. A digital copy, which includes your name in the credits, a copy of the film, and the soundtrack plus the booklet. Then there is the standard Blu-ray box set, which adds to everything that we talked about with the digital copies, and you get the Blu-ray, two posters, a commemorative booklet, and a few more perks. And then finally, the deluxe box set adds a t-shirt. Come get some. All right, Jen, what, are, what should everybody do? Like, comment, share, and subscribe. All right. And so, get on the stew train if you're not already on it. Oh, yeah. I got lots of stew train tickets. There's plenty of room. In fact, we I have a guy. I'll make one phone call. He adds another car to the train. So it's never going to run out. You, you guys are welcome. <laughs> All right. So until the next. See ya. And Jen, happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Bye, guys.